Aloha, everyone. I'm Malika Dudley. We're here with Chris Brinchley, Warning Coordinator Meteorologist. Is this correct? Correct, yes. All right, Central Pacific Hurricane Center. We also are at the headquarters of the National Weather Service, so you guys have a lot of data collection going on, lots of eyes on not only the systems, but our current weather. So why don't we start with this guy? Okay, so Hurricane Ignacio rapidly intensified starting overnight, and then it's continued to intensify this morning. It's now a Category 4 hurricane, uh, which is uh, a major hurricane as, as we consider it. Uh, wind speeds of 140 miles per hour sustained with that at 11 a.m. And those were confirmed with uh, Hurricane Hunters who flew through there uh, at uh, the 11 a.m. advisory. So uh, we have a pretty good idea of how strong uh, Ignacio is. The trick is now uh, what is going to happen as Ignacio <coughs> moves to the northwest and the potential for uh, the weakening that we've been forecasting and, and potential for wind shear to impact it. I did have a question earlier today. Um, sometimes people go, oh, why did the center of the storm move backwards? <laughs> um, but you tell me if this is right. It's because you guys are kind of going off a satellite, and then once the hurricane hunters go through, they can get an exact position. So the storm hasn't backtracked. Yeah, we're co constantly refining where we uh, believe the center is. Uh, when we do have a satellite image like this, it's quite easy to figure out where the center is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but a lot of times when it's a developing system or when it is shearing apart, we have trouble figuring out where the center is. It's obscured by clouds uh, or it may be sheared, so it may be displaced from where we think it may be. And so as we refine that location, sometimes it looks like it goes in a different direction when, in fact, we're just getting more information. Right. I also had a question from Sean Saito, one of our readers. How large, how expansive is this system? I know we talk about hurricane force winds extending a certain amount, tropical storm force winds extending a certain amount, but that's not the extent of the entire system. We've got all of this moisture. So can you tell us about that? So Hurricane Inacio now, as we can see it here mm -hmm. on the presentation of the satellite image, the Hurricane force winds, a really bad weather is usually concentrated in this ring that you can see that's just surrounding the eye. That's where you see those strongest winds. But as you were saying, the tropical storm force winds radiate outward from the eye. And then beyond the winds, you have the impacts of having these individual thunderstorms that develop way out on the fringe. And you can get some pretty pretty interesting, pretty crazy weather from some, some of those. And those are sometimes over 100 miles from the center. So the impacts a lot of times radiate out. Uh, one other thing is the surf that's generated from the winds associated with the storm radiate out even further and starting to affect the islands from the east uh, as early as this afternoon. Let's talk specifically about Maui County. What are some of the most susceptible areas and the greatest impacts that we could see based on the current track? Based on the current track of Ignacio, we uh, we would anticipate that the possibility that we're going to get some tropical storm type conditions, uh, it's really going to be a close call based on the track, the exact track that uh, Ignacio takes. If it, if it bends a little close to the islands, the impacts are going to be a little bit worse. But right now the uh, anticipated impacts are going to be some increasing winds as Ignacio moves through. Uh, also, we're going to start to see a little bit of increase in moisture, so uh, rain showers possibly becoming heavy at times, uh, maybe even a thunderstorm. Uh, and then also on the east-facing shores and the southeast-facing shores, the surf is going to start coming up, and we're going to expect uh, advisory-level surf trending into warning-level high surf on those east-facing shores. Uh, as due to Ignacio moving through. Do you have any like loose timing right now for Maui County? Or? Yeah, right now the, the latest it looks like uh, for Maui County we would start to see the impacts sometime later Monday uh, as far as uh, potential for wind and potential for uh, heavy rain. Uh, the surf will probably come up a little bit before that. We'll start to notice that even as early as Sunday on the East Facing Shores. Uh, and then, you know, through Tuesday, it looks like it, it could be very unsettled. And really, it's going to depend on that, that final track. Right now, has this system kind of been um, doing what you think it would? So far, it's, it's been a pretty steady mover. Um, 
uh, compared to some of our previous ones that have wobbled around and moved all over the place. Uh, so far, uh, the steering currents have kept it on uh, a pretty continuous track. Uh, so the forecast really hasn't, we haven't seen a lot of changes with the forecast track. And usually that's equated with a little bit more confidence. However, we, we need to take that with the uh, appropriate amount of uncertainty and prepare even if it looks like, oh, we might just get by uh, a slight change on the order of 10 or 20 miles of that eye could change all the impacts that we have. So you prepared. All right, anything specific for Maui County? I know with Izel, um, Ulupalakua really got slammed with the winds. We had trees down everywhere. Is that a susceptible area for a storm? Uh, they're more susceptible uh, with Izel. Uh, the center moved south of them. So what it does is it accelerates from the, the southeast up over that ridge top, the Ulupalakua ridge top. So um, with a north passing storm, other areas would be susceptible, not necessarily Ulupalakua, but you know perhaps areas in the Central Valley. You get some funneling from the Southwest, uh, Maalaya, Kihei. Some some of these places that maybe don't get a whole lot of wind uh, could be more susceptible, and so that's sort of the the direction that the wind's coming from and the speed that results in some of these impacts. There have been so many this season. It has been just a whirlwind. Um, what are you anticipating for the rest of the season? I mean, it, it's because of El Nino? Yeah, we, we think that El Nino plays a strong factor in how active the, the uh, hurricane season is here in this basin and in the eastern Pacific Basin. Um, so looking at what we're looking at near record El Nino conditions, uh, we would anticipate that this activity, this high activity, would continue through the rest of the hurricane season. Which is through November 30th. Exactly. Yep. Gosh, well, good luck to you guys. <laughs> I think we all, you know, we're all hoping for the best, obviously. We all hope for the system to pass the farthest away in the cone, <laughs> you know, so that we have the least amount of effects. We all have to prepare just in case. And do you have any preparedness um, tips for our Maui County audience? Uh, exactly. We do need to, to uh, be prepared. And if it's not going to be this one, then we, we're prepared one. So general preparedness, thing, things like getting together your 72-hour kit, getting together your supplies of water that you need for to last for almost you know seven days in some cases just getting those sorts of supplies well in advance so that you're not rushing around in a panic uh, as we get closer to a potential threat so I think once you get those set then you feel a little bit better and then you're if we have a watch then you can do other preparedness actions thank you so much Chris from Maui now I'm Malika Dudley oh we hope